Now going with the snap fit joints, they are a quick and easy way to connect two 3D printed components together um, by doing kind of un by doing the interlocking features. They can be low cost and time saving connections and they can reduce the number of parts you use in your design or your assembly. So it will give you the possibility of rapid assembly and disassembly. So you can see here having snap fits, males and female snap fits here. Upper housing, lower housing, cross section, they go together. They are in place. If you want to take them out, you just unlock these snap fits and your uh, design is two parts. As long as not, you're not doing this repetitively and a lot, only occasionally for fixing or for inspection, then that's fine. You can go with this. So if we talk in more details about the snap fit connection, if you are doing 3D printed snap fits, um, it doesn't have injection molding design limitations, like draft angles, separation lines, wall thickness undercuts. It can be easily designed and changed. They are considered a good solution for rapid prototype generation. Uh, in that case, the clearance and fit are critical. And because of this, they are applied in the design and testing of enclosures. So male, female snap fit in here. This guy will go in here with a little force from the back. It This lip will clamp in here. And if you pull it back, it will not go out until you apply force on this lip to, to release from place. So as we mentioned before, this is a real male snap fit, male snap fit, female snap fit. Common snap fit connections. You have the cantilever snap fit, which is the snap fit having kind of cantilever beam with a applied compression force happening on it while uh, connecting the two parts together. It's a very common snap fit joint. It have a protrusion at one end of the beam and structure support at the other end. Uh, this protrusion inserted into a cut out or slot and it will deflect while you're inserting that part. So you have here structure support and you have protrusion that we're talking about in here. You push the whole component in here into this cut out or slot it will be pulled down a little bit by uh, by the force coming from the back on it then it will snap in place if it's fully inserted the protrusion will bend back so it will be bending forward by this inclination it will be sliding off this edge then it will snap back i'm sure most of you know that already experienced that in your real life so you just have the connection in place. Then the other kind of snap fit, which is less famous, the annular snap fit. Uh, it utilizes the hoop strain to hold a pressed part in place. Common examples are the bottles and pin caps. Not all bottles, some bottles, but mostly pin caps. Like when you have a pin and you have a cap, it will snap in place and you can remove it later as needed with a little force. With annular snap fits, you can achieve a waterproof seal around the joint. For the snap fit mechanical consideration, which is the, let's say, the cantilever snap fit, snap fits encounter most stress during attachment and should return to their natural position when the joining process is completed. When the part is mated, like it's in place, uh, the undercut hold them together. Uh, depending on the shape of the undercut and the shape of the head of the snap fit male, uh, snap fit assemblies can be designed to be permanent. So, um, if you are designing the snap fit, like with consideration, with the suitable material, it can be used for many times without any noticeable fatigue. But fatigue is there, to be honest with you, but it depends when this kind of mechanism will fail eventually uh, based on the lifetime of of your part if you are interested in the mechanical uh, analysis the forces analysis on the snap fit so this is the male snap fit you can see here the mating force so this is the female so it's coming in this part will slide in here so there is an, uh, a force of R force of P 
and the force of W as a friction. Then here you have the friction cone. You can see there's some angles involved. So if you want to calculate the friction coefficient, mu equal tan beta. If you want to calculate the, the mating force W, which is happening in here, like this part is pushed forward, this part is pushed backward. W equals the P force in here, multiplied by tan, the alpha angle plus the beta angle, and can be represented in the other way. I will not ask you about these kind of analysis. We are not in a design course. We are in a 3D printing uh, introductory course, but it's good to know. So as we mentioned, the annular snap fit, this is your pin. You have a little notch protrusion in here. You have an exact engrave with the exact uh, dimensions for the protrusion in here with a little clearance. When you push back in, it will slide all the way and clamp. So this engraved part will clamp on the protrusion, be in place, and it's considered a seal, so there's no water can enter in here. Um, you have as well a ball and socket joint, kind of annular snap fit type. Some bottles, they have this design so you can push it in. We're not talking about the threaded type, but we're talking about the one that you apply force and it will clip, clip in place. Kind of the older bottles that have this kind of mechanism. Taper the design. Snap fit cantilever with a constant cross section. It will have uneven distribution of strain. If you want to do a good design, then you diminish the cross section of the cantilever beam over its length. It will let you use less material and will give you more, uh, more efficient strain distribution in the cantilever. So this is a, a stress analysis for the cantilever snap fit, male, female. So you can see here most forces applied in here. And of course it will change. Maybe the force will be more in here while you're pushing forward before it's in place. But when it's in place, mostly the force will be and the stress will be focused in here. Filleting the base of the cantilever, that's always a good practice. You go here, don't give a sharp angles because the, you know, you're applying force in here. So you don't need your cantilever snap fit to be broken from here. Adding a fillet to the cantilever will distribute the stress over the broader area, which will make the connection stronger. The radius of the fillet should be at least 0.5 or half the thickness of the base of the cantilever. That's something. If the base of the cantilever is a one millimeter, then you need to have this as a half a millimeter and so on. Increasing the width. If you increase the width for your cantilever snap fit will help making your snap fit male stronger and um, maybe without analysis you can't reach the optimum um, thickness needed until you do some kind of trail and error to achieve the best stiffness needed but now with the analysis software if you want to go further with this if you are doing a very important application then you can do kind of finite image analysis and know when this part will fail and when it can handle better to have the optimized thickness needed. But it should be at least over five millimeters wide. Building direction, as we know, in order to achieve this cantilever snap fit, you wanna put it into a 3D printer and 3D printer will print in a certain direction, layer by layer. So we can imagine this part was printed while this side on the ground like like we are doing counterclockwise 90 degrees rotation it will be on the ground then you're building layer by layer all the way up so try to avoid that kind of snap fit design or print direction if you build up from the bed vertically in the z direction these are inherently weaker due to the anisotropic nature of the 3d printing So the snap fit built in the direction shown in the image in here to the left will be much stronger. So instead of going downward, so if you can do it to the left stronger, why? Because the force will be pushing on the cantilever 
uh, this way. So it's stronger if you just flip this thing so that you, let me show you. So if you go in here, in the first design we saw, this is how they built their cantilever, somehow uh, like this, right? So this is the printer nozzle, will come from here. So you build first layer, second layer, third layer, fourth layer, fifth layer, sixth layer, seventh layer, etc. So when you have a force coming from the female snap fit in here, the force will be that way. So first layer and second layer, third layer are parallel. So they have high possibility to peel off than if we design the male snap fit in the way I'll show you now. If you have the male snap fit designed this way, like this is the orientation of print, then, so this is the base for the 3D printer. This is the nozzle. Then if you build it this way, each one is, each green line is represented a layer. So in this way, when you have the force coming that way, it's perpendicular on, it is perpendicular on the, on the layer. So each layer will push the next layer. So it will have um, more strength than if it's that way. So this is the right way. This is the wrong way to build. Right, orient, right orientation, wrong orientation. Right? Adding lugs, we mentioned that lugs will keep things aligned together and transfer some of the shear loads that the clips may be subjected to. If you have a kind of clips on the sides, this guy will transfer the shear loads between the two components or the sub-assemblies. Or the sub-assemblies connected together, this can transfer uh, the shear loads from the clips that are applying all over around the around the assembly.